Finally, after a year and a half, we're back at the high power launch site to launch some high pressure water rockets. First up, we wanted to fly Dark Shadow, which hasn't flown for a couple of years. This time, we're fitting it with Horizon's parachute deployment mechanism, which is about 100 grams lighter than Dark Shadow's original one. That 100 gram savings translates to about 20 meters in high altitude. Since the last flight, we're also going to up the pressure by about 100 psi to 1000 psi. This will be only our third launch at this pressure. We are also using the Horizon launcher here as we need to get to higher pressures and be far away enough for safety. It's also another good test of the launcher before using it on the big Horizon booster. Later in the video, we'll also see what damage this pressure does to the release head. The rocket setup was fairly straightforward and we filled the rocket with 1.8 litres of water. So it's lined up, it's going in straight. Stop, stop. It was pretty overcast on the day, so the colours are a little dull and the backlighting by the sun didn't help much either. Here we're arming the electronics, starting the altimeter and the camera. Stand it up and hold your hold this. Go bye. At full pressure there's about 450 grams or almost a pound of air in the rocket. We really like this launch site as there's plenty of clearance in all directions. Uh, and thankfully Paul reminded us to turn on the air from the scuba tank. Here we're just checking that the launcher and the release head are both armed. So let's have a look at the launch. We're at 1000, okay so we're launching. Wait, wait, okay. Uh, and we're launching in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! I can see it. Yep. And again from a couple of angles. The motor equivalent here is an I-897 with half a second burn time. The deployment delay was set for 12 seconds, which it turns out was spot on and the parachute deployed right at Apogee. The rocket drifted a long way down range, probably close to a kilometre from the launch site. The total flight time was 2 minutes and 1 second. We ended up looking for it for about 45 minutes. And what became clear is that for Horizon, we're going to need a GPS tracker. The rocket was recovered in good condition and it will hopefully fly again one day. Alright, let's get into it. Okay. Stop recording. Altitude was. 2,650 feet. Can you see it on there? Yep. And simulations for this flight gave us uh, 2,637 feet. So if you subtract the 10 feet added by standing the rocket up on the pad, so that's bang on the predictions. So one thing that we observed that we thought was interesting was the noise the onboard camera recorded as the rocket was pressurized. When we pressurize the rocket, we pressurize it in bursts. So here's the audio file. You can clearly see the volume decreases as the pressure builds. I'm not really sure why that is. If you've got any ideas, leave them in the comments below. Let's have a look at the damage caused by the launch. Here you can see how much the release head was forced down. And here you can see the launch tube bending. When the water came out of the nozzle and slammed into the release head, it bent quite a bit of metal. 
Here's a close up of the damage. The bottom plate is bent back. Here you can see it bowed and spent all along here as well. The control box lid was also broken, basically split in two. This is where it was impacted by the water. And even the lever arm slightly bent. And here's a hole it left behind in the tarp covering the ground. It's basically like a water jet. Here is a slow motion view of the launch and how much the launch have moved around. Quite a bit of it just becomes elastic and wobbles quite a bit. Next up was the Nova rocket. Launching in three. On previous flights at our local launch site, we kept the pressures lower because of altitude restrictions. But here we can crank the pressure right up. The rocket's filled with 700 mils of water and a little bit of detergent. Setup was again straightforward and we're using the tower launcher because Nova doesn't have any rail buttons. This rocket also uses its own release head that's designed specifically for 7mm nozzles. We're only using low pressure hoses for this launch as it's a much easier setup. On the first launch, we pressurized the rocket to 400 psi. This was the original design pressure. Four, three, two, one, go! Here it is again from a few different angles. Go! The rocket flew nice and straight with good deployment, but the wind made it drift downrange quite a bit. Parachutes out. Well, that is just that I'm going to cause a lot smear. I haven't come to Padla. That extra 60 psi over the last launch raised the altitude by another 200 feet. That's where we launched it from. Although the wind picked up a little more, we decided to put it up again because we had the range clearance for long drifts. We increased the deployment delay so that the parachute would open a little later to reduce that drift. And here's that launch. Launching in five, four, three, two, one, go! And again from down below. Well, that was slightly suboptimal. We still don't know why it didn't deploy the parachute though. <laughs> That's well and truly stuffed. Surprisingly, the pressure chamber still looks intact. There's the altimeter. Did that survive? No, ultimate is dead. Do you we killed it. it. The rocket was definitely armed, as I've got that on video, but we did not test the deployment mechanism after the last flight. So perhaps the servo or battery connections were loose and the acceleration of the second flight disconnected them. We don't know. In any case, this was our offering to appease the rocket gods. All the electronics on the rocket were damaged. Uh, we may be able to repair the altimeter and the servo timer though. Uh, we'll see. Look on the bright side, we didn't kill the camera. That's the servo motor jammed right into the middle there. And that's one of the servo motor uh, screws. 
that it was time to pack up and head back home to Sydney. Oh yeah, in Australia, we drive on the underside of the road. In any case, thank you for sticking around and watching the video until the end. In the next video, we'll cover a new design concept for both water and model rockets that we've been experimenting with.